I dream that there are teeth growing all over me, everywhere on me and in me, like cysts or bone spurs. They're loose, but I can't remove them because I have no hands. Hello and welcome to another episode of Something Rotten. Uh, this is our little little weirdo indie mini season where last time we played a game called Iron Lung being made into a movie soon by Markiplier. And this time we played a little game called Anatomy. My name is Jacob Geller. I'm joined by my co-host as always, Blake Hester, who I think is more mad at me for this episode than any episode we have ever recorded for this show before. <sighs> Two notes, Jacob Geller. One, in the long-running uh, scorecard between Something Rotten and Jeff Keeley, uh, we're taking one point because uh, we actually did play indies in our indie season, and they uh, nominated mostly not that is true <laughs> in their indie awards category. Uh, second, yeah, man, what the fuck is your problem, dude? Like, the last season... This season, the show is a burden. I gotta play so much fucking scary shit these days. Blake has made me promise no more horror games for several seasons at least. If if I may just hog this time for just one more second, I'd like to point out my notes to Jacob as I was playing Anatomy was, hey, what what's going on here? And then immediately all caps, fuck you. <laughs> So that's that's how I handled this game. That is correct. Uh, but it's not just Blake and I. Uh, we are also joined by a uh, writer, uh, freelancer, just kind of like person about town, Autumn Wright. <laughs> Hello. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Thank you for coming on Something Rotten. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Um, you, I feel like uh, right now, I hope you're, you're enjoying having... Uh, a, a review out of a movie Blake wait a movie that you saw last night oh autumn did you review so that? in in the past autumn uh reviewed the boy and the heron Miyazaki's uh new film that uh Blake has seen and autumn I'm sure you have seen and I have not because I live in North Carolina and they're not playing it anywhere uh, what what do you have coming up that'll be out in the present of this uh, podcast release? Well, relevant to that, uh, I have an interview out at Paste this week uh, with Joe Hisaishi. Oh, shit. Who's the composer wow. for uh, Boy in the Heron and every other I, I, uh, Genuinely, like, one of my favorite uh, music people, period. I listen to Joe Hisaishi most days of the week, probably. That's amazing. Yeah, really weird to be on a Zoom call with him, gotta say. Yeah. I, I went and saw it last night, and I did my best to um to replicate the experience of the film's premiere. I had not seen any trade. I had only seen the posters for this movie. A trip, not knowing what you're in store for. Uh, the opening two minutes, Jacob, if I may t- tell you one thing about the opening two minutes. They go hard on a on an unbelievable scale. Like we don't have numbers to talk about how hard the animation is in in literally just the opening Can't two wait. minutes. It's on. Un- it's um, but uh, Autumn, we have not asked you here to talk about uh, the, the the king among men, Hayao Miyazaki. Uh, instead, <laughs> I, I, here's a question that I guess we we should have asked before uh, asking you on this podcast, which is, how are you with horror? Yeah, Blake did not <laughs> ask that. Um, like I to- I told you, but... Blake, I said check check with Autumn. This is a very scary. Okay, game. hold on. In my defense, I didn't say, hi, Autumn, uh, you are required to play this game. I said, would you like to play this game and come talk to us? Like, you had the chance to say no. Um, yeah, no, I am a crybaby that was afraid of the dark. Um, but I think uh, critics of all sorts, I've noticed, just really like horror or like talking about horror. Yeah. Um, there's something about the genre for like every medium, I think, that really pulls at for critics so i'm surrounded by people that uh have those brain worms um and i'm like familiar with kitty horror show stuff probably from your videos more than anything um and this game in particular was like pretty big in the critical conscience in like 2016 so it's been on my periphery um but if you ask me like what is a scary game that would probably be like alan wake 2 um or like uh something that this game actually made me think a lot it was like the echoes of the eye dlc oh yeah uh, that's, a, that's a great connection oh yeah yeah um okay i want to get into that uh more but first i do 
Blake, uh, without talking about the content of the game, can you just walk me through mm -hmm. your experience of playing this? Maybe, it, you know, in between when I was getting the messages uh, telling me to go fuck myself yeah, and what was sure. wrong with me and et cetera. For sure. So it, it was funny. Like, I definitely watched, I rewatched your video, which, Jacob, did you know that video came out four years ago? It's a mess. I mean, I, I do know because I watch it and there are like a million production things that yeah. make me want to tear my hair out. Can I send a message back through space time and say, Jacob, get a better mic? I, yeah, I your know. Old mic was terrible. Um, yeah, so, uh, but I remember nothing about it. Like, when I heard the first quote in the game, I was like, oh, I vaguely remember this. But, like, I basically went in as blind as possible. Um, and, you know, mild spoilies for what the game is, it preys on just, like, the simplest fear of someone who grew up in a house and that's being in that house with the lights off. And it's like, I I've never really thought deeply about this shit, but... I genuinely think that's probably the scariest thing outside of, like, Cthulhu being real and showing the hell up. It's just, like, you're in a home alone. And this game is, like, I mean, because it's dark and it's hard to see, I spent the whole game thinking a jump scare was going to happen. And then when I had the slow realization that tension is never going to be released, like, it was, we just played Silent Hill 2, which has cut scenes, the tension is relieved eventually. This game is... The only release of tension is the knowledge that you're finally done. And so it's an hour of just like your nerves being as heightened as possible and there being no escape from it outside of like giving up on it. And um, am I doing a good job answering your question? Yeah, I, I think that it is... was I, I'm trying to like explain the feeling of having your nerves frayed, <laughs> you know, like it was it was the scariest, I would say, piece of media I've ever encountered. Yeah, so I wanna I wanna talk a little about how I how I first encountered this game because it is it is also it 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 sort of feels like an encounter with like something supernatural or like something sublime yeah. just in like the the emotions that this creates. But um, I first heard of it through there might have been a very early rock paper shotgun uh article about it but cool ghosts which was a youtube channel that uh matt lease and like quentin smith and people used to run did uh did a video about anatomy um that i think quentin like scripted or he was talking or whatever um and and i thought it sounded cool and i played it and the first time i got through i don't even know if i got through the second playthrough and i like i had to stop because i was too scared and then and this was kind of like the origin of one of my one of my main takes on horror which is that not finishing is the worst thing that you can do because like i didn't finish and then the game remained like alive for me you know it was like i did not even get you know blake he said there's not really any closure but it's like at least you get to a point where the game ends and you're reminded like oh this right. is a media experience that someone made and now it's over but because i didn't do that i was just kind of like there is this thing on my computer that is so scary that i might die and and so I had to like I had to like go back days later and I played it in the middle of the day with all the lights on and I finished it and I was like okay now I now I get that um, and since then it has become like one of my favorite uh, th this I would put this game in like my top ten games of all time but it is um, you did you you did when we did that when you joined that Twitter trend we were doing when we were giving our info to some <laughs> random <true>. chart website. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's it's been, you know, I've I've played it many times since then. It's a game that I've kind of like if I've been with friends, I've done that dickhead thing of being like, "Hey, you should you should play this and then I can watch you be scared." Uh yeah. but it's yeah, it's just kind of like remained remained in there for me. Um Autumn, you said you were you were aware of kind of the critical conversation around this game and and Kitty Horror Show was a creator who we can talk about a little. But this was playing it for the show was your first time through yeah i uh similar to blake was anticipating something uh -huh. the whole time yeah, yeah yeah and that's the worst fucking part is that something literally will not come yeah, for you i think in like uh, i had a similar feeling to like the not uh wanting to open the game on your desktop uh for me that was going through the house being like i hope this door does not open <laughs> right 
I would prefer it if this is not the right door. They just don't have to find out what it's what is next. Um. So for both of you, did you did you like it? Like when when you were done, were you like, I'm glad I played that? I have I have a note that says I can't say I enjoyed myself. Um, but in the like five days since, um, I've like thought a lot about it i like have written a lot more beneath my notes about it i'm just like yeah i don't know another game that does this quite like this does yeah i uh i two billion percent loved it jacob you struck out i mean still fuck you we are business partners only friendship ended with anatomy (laughs) uh but i loved it i mean it like i mean coming off silent hill 2 especially which like even compared to a lot of Mo- uh, well compared to like most horror games coming out today like silent hill 2 20 years ago like really understood being a video game and being scary but i think anatomy just takes it to a whole nother level like there's no universe where this anatomy i think works as a tv show or a movie maybe as a book could be kind of interesting but it's like the act of playing it is what is so scary and the like meta the kind of we'll talk about the meta o- opening and closing this game does that is like you can't do that with something you're streaming on Netflix, you know, um, that like, I, I'm really fascinated by how well Kitty Horror Show just like knows video games and understands horror within video games that like, I loved it. I, yeah. I fucking adore it. Um, it goes so hard for such a simple, like for, for how largely non-interactive this game is there are so many like very specifically gamey things that are so clever in it um i do want to note before we talk about this i was just looking at the at kitty horror show's uh wikipedia page there is one paragraph where uh previous something rotten guest julie muncie previous something rotten guest surreal vasquez and me are all quoted uh, talking about the game which is like a pretty good batting effort yeah i mean the gamey sorry uh, to circle back one last thought um also what i saw with that quote of yours jacob and that was one of your pieces for game informer never forget your roots brother that's right (laughs) um uh the the gaminess of it is so interesting because you know it's like it's like a low poly very I don't know if micro indie is the right word, but NDS indie game. And a lot of times those games are rough around the edges. And I don't think this game particularly is aside from it's like aesthetic, but it, it plays with making you think it's like glitching, glitching out. And then when you realize like, Oh no, it's just going house of leaves on me. And these are not glitches. And Kitty horror show has created a way to make the idea of a video game, uh, having bugs in it scary it's like it's a it's 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 great shouts out friend of the show kitty horse i feel like we made it a pretty good uh length into the podcast without mentioning house of leaves <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah, that, yeah that's about all it takes it's it's that and and i will also talk about uh the the haunting of hill house which is um not only uh, a, a, an inspiration but actually like name dropped in the read me uh kitty horror show says like you know uh, shout out to Shirley Jackson or whatever, which is uh, which is awesome. Um, so Kitty Horror Show, as as a creator, um, has been has been doing this for a while. Um, I've I've been she's just as like a Patreon. I've been like a Patreon supporter for a while. Uh, but it, it's interesting that it's like she's kind of made. You know, if you look at her Wikipedia, it's like there's a game called uh, Kirza, which I actually haven't played. And then Anatomy, and then she's been making these packs called, like, Haunted Cities for for the past, you know, like, seven, eight years at this point. Um, and, and has this fucking lock on, like, what it is that she's doing in a way that I, I just find, like, really engaging as a player being able to, like, interact with someone's whole body of work. And just see, like, okay, you're playing with different themes, but, like, there is kind of, there's such an art style here that is really cool to see. And I, I think it's it's fun that you, like, you can play all of her games and it doesn't take that long. And all of them are kind of, like, interesting and, and, and working with similar themes. Um, but let's talk about, let's talk about what, what anatomy actually is, like, as a game. Because 
the description of it is kind of just a game where you walk around a house and you pick up cassette tapes and you put them in a tape player. And that's, mm-hmm. like, mechanically, yeah. that's the but whole game. But what if that house and those cassettes fucking hated you more than anything on <laughs> like, do you did you know it was going to be just a game where you walked around and picked up cassette tapes? Jacob, I didn't know fucking anything about this game. <laughs> I'm telling you. I watched your video four years ago and remembered not a single goddamn thing. That was And that was the only interaction I've ever had with this, this game. Like, no. I had no clue. I probably spent 20 minutes when I booted the game up trying to figure out what the hell I was supposed to do before I found the first cassette tape. One of my notes <laughs> one of my notes is, uh, oh man, I forget just how dark this game is. That it, like, it is really yeah. right on the edge of completely unplayably dark. That it's like your your field of vision or your like the light in front of you goes like maybe a foot and a half in like dark hallways and there's so much navigation that is like literally just hugging a wall because you cannot see like three feet in front of you well it's, it's got like tomb raider one aesthetic where it's like the gate it almost looks like the world is building itself in front of you because the draw distance is so low mm-hmm. uh yeah especially like the basement and the garage where uh, that garage, I think, could fit 45 cars. Yeah. Uh, trying to, getting, like, walking to the middle of those rooms is like, oh, I'm never finding my way out of this. I'm stuck here forever. Yeah, my very first note is just can't see shit. Yep. <laughs> yeah. um, and to the extent that, like, if you're playing this on, like, a laptop or something, you can have, it's like, you can actually make this unplayable for yourself by, like, the wrong monitor choice. If you if you just, like, oh, don't yeah. have something that can kick out enough light. Um, so, but, so, the like, the first thing that you do in this game is you walk into, uh, you walk in a straight line through the house turn into the kitchen there's a cassette player and a cassette tape on the table you pick up the tape put it in the player uh and it and it's this this very kind of i don't even know how to describe the sound just kind of like a somewhat degraded academic lecture on um on on the idea of the house you know in the history of the modern civilized human being it's difficult to overstate the importance of the house is like its first line which i think of as as very iconic um uh and then and then when it's done there's just text at the bottom that says the next tape is in the dining room or in a bedroom or in a bathroom and for your whole first run through you just you just go and you pick it up and you listen to the tape and then you go find the next one. Um, I think this this quote is, I mean, it's one of the best lines in the game. But, like, had y'all ever considered the house as, like, a living organism before this moment? I know that's like, sounds like a goofy question, but that's kind of the thesis of this game. Had you ever, like, looked at a living space in the way that this game kind of is, like, pr- asking you to? I don't think quite in the way this is yeah. going on. But, like, one thing that was, like, really on my mind that, it's like a couple of weeks ago, I read uh, uh, A Closed and Common Orbit by Becky Chambers, who's this uh, feminist sci-fi author. Um, and that book is about ship AIs yeah. getting human bodies, basically. Um, and so it's about them being like, what the, what do I do with this? What do I do with two eyes? I'm used to having cameras in the corners of rooms. Uh, and so like, that's that was really on my mind thinking about this as the house was coming alive. I think one of one of the reasons that this game is so scary is like my answer is like no but yes. You know, in that like I I had never been like the house is alive. I'd certainly never been kind of like the living room is the heart and the bedroom is the head or whatever in the in the way that this narration kind of does. But um, as as I think I said in that that video that I made like four years ago, you know, like an experience that I had that I think every kid had if you had stairs in your house was like it was, you know, it's like, oh, you're going to bed and you have to turn off all the lights downstairs. And as soon as you do that, your house becomes like unsafe and you have to like run as fast as you can up the stairs because in the dark, just like a bad thing might happen. And I, like, I really had that. I've talked many times on this podcast about how I was and am still pretty just scared of the dark. And so, like, having that kind of, like, oh, maybe that is what I was scared of this whole time is, like, one of the reasons that I feel like this game is just able to, like, 
mainline into the horror centers of my brain is kind of that like realization of like maybe this was present the whole time you know that that like that's why i was so freaked out by like being in the dark in my own there's house. there's something I've, I've i've thought about a lot in this game like i feel like really reminded me of is whenever i move into a new place and I, especially when i like we'll go back to my hometown i'll always try to drive past like my old childhood home and see how it's been like redone by its current owners or like i just moved into a part an apartment which is like a fairly old building compared to where i've lived previously i always am like i wish i could just know all the people that lived here and everything that happened and there's always like when i drive past my old house or like i'll look up zillow and be like what's it kind of look like these days i'll be like why the fuck would they paint it why would they get uh -huh. rid of our old microwave that barely worked i'll get like kind of pissed off because like don't they know what happened in the house like that microwave had fucking history i made so much chef boy rd in that shit but um i feel like this game kind of like gets at that a little bit you know because it's like it's very much a a game about a house in disrepair and it's almost like the house is having the anger i'm having like we made so much shit in here why would you fucking leave me to kind of rot and I just kept thinking, especially because I played this, like, literally the day after I moved into my apartment. And I was like, who was in here before me? Would they be mad about where I decided to hang my pictures or put our couch in the shit? Jacob, you know what I love watching on the internet? Blake, I'm going to politely remind you we are recording right now. Movies! Movies! Cinema! All kinds of movies from all over the world. But... For reasons not fully worth exploring here, streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, and the like have different libraries based on which countries they're being used in. Is that true? True as the day is long. That's why I use NordVPN to unlock my computer's location, allowing me to watch Netflix in America, Japan, Albania, the USSR, Constantinople. Oh, I don't know about the last two, but uh, that's really interesting. They added a time travel feature. So you're saying I could use NordVPN to watch all my favorite anime before they come to America? Sure can, but that's not all. Believe it or not, bad actors are doing their darndest to steal your information online. Wait, what? Yep, and you're helping them by not encrypting your data. Oh my god. Annie, lock our doors! I'll explain later! Yeah, don't get caught being a dummy and use NordVPN to protect yourself from malware, trackers, and ads. It'll also notify you if someone leaks your information online, and it helps you avoid those pesky captchas and block lists. Okay, sure, but... Is Nord tracking or sharing what I'm doing online? Never! Your traffic is always protected with their robust encryption and their options to make sure your data is never exposed. Okay, well that sounds great, but how do I sign up? Well, Nord sponsored this episode, so we have a special link. Go to nordvpn.com slash rotten, and from there you can get Nord apps on all your favorite platforms, and one account can be used on up to six freaking devices. They also have 24-7 customer support and a 30-day money-back guarantee if for any reason you don't like it. Okay, I'm signing up right now. Let me just type this in, nordvpn.com slash rotten. Probably the best thing you've ever done online, Jacob. Go to nordvpn.com slash rotten and sign up for NordVPN to watch all your favorite movies and, importantly, protect yourself on the information super highway. What about the information normal highway? Does it have to be super? I'm looking for it. You know, it, it's an interesting question, Blake. I was actually thinking about uh, you and your new apartment because, like, yeah. I feel like part of this game's horror is kind of a specifically um, suburban or rural horror in that, like, it is very much about a house and not about, like, an apartment. And, and kind of, like, part of it is is that kind of isolation and the idea that like it could have been there without anyone being in it which i is not really something that i associate with new york you know it, it feels like there are cities are just kind of like so dense and so constantly moving that like i i don't know if i would be scared in the same way being in like a dark apartment in a city versus being yeah. in like a dark house in kind of a suburb but it, and that's so weird right like i agree with you like the, the worst idea i can think of for a horror movie is like a haunted apartment it's like i don't own this place i'll just move out who cares it cost me a few <laughs> right. extra hundred bucks whatever i'm out see you later i'll break my lease but like when i think about a house in the suburbs that's been that is empty and i just think about standing in it alone like, there's something about it that is so inherently creepy. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, you know how sometimes you're at home and nothing 
happen is happening you're not watching a horror movie but like you just it kind of dawns on you that you're in a large space by yourself and all of a sudden you're scared of the house where all your belongings and loved ones have inhabited that like yeah i agree with you and the this house the way it flips the script is like not only is the idea of a dark empty house scary it adds an added layer of like this house is sentient and it's mad at you yeah and if your house turns on you you and your video jacob you talk about uh black mold or like it, mm-hmm. as they write in leviticus right leviticus yeah or they, t- they talk about the house getting leprosy but yeah exactly. we can basically yeah, intuit which, that it is mold yeah like that's a house you can see that as a house being angry at you and you know when you got to fumigate your house or whatever it's like there's nothing worse than thinking your walls can turn on you yeah and kitty horse shows like yeah what if I, what if that was the whole pitch well, and i think so that is in the first in the first run of the game, because you do have to play through the game many times, that is, I think, the the first kind of stroke of genius here is that when you get these cassette tapes, it's not talking about the place you just were. It is talking about the place that you are going to have to go. And so you get, oh, sure. you get a cassette tape and it talks about, like, um, here's this really scary idea of what a bedroom is could represent in a house and then after that tape is done it says there is a tape in a bedroom and it's like great now my head is filled with these ideas and i have to like walk up there (laughs) right however don't skip over the brilliant piece of uh the the brilliant curveball with that bedroom where you play a tape and the narrator is like most people scared shitless of their basements text pops up they they say it more eloquently than most people who scared shitless <laughs> of their basements, but you understand. Text pops up, go to the basement. You are terrified. And you go get the tape down there. You come up, you put it in, and then, like, uh, just the best well-timed joke possible. It goes, but basements aren't for real scary. You ever heard of bedrooms? <laughs> yeah. And then it goes on to deliver this thesis about how bedrooms are scary. And if you've ever seen Paranormal Activity 1, do you remember... Uh, the girl standing over her husband watching him for six hours. This is basically what this text is making you think, or this uh, narration is making you think of the fact someone could watch over you while you sleep. That is, for me, that's the the single scariest, like, line of dialogue absent of anything, just like the ideology of the game is so- the anyone could stand over you watching you while you're asleep and you don't know it and it's kind of up up to your bedroom to make sure that doesn't happen or happen so the uh, autumn i want to kick it to you after this to hear your thoughts on this because i think the, the scary bedroom is so fascinating but like there are two I, I i don't think they're required but there are two like recordings you can find and play that i think were the scariest moments of the game for me but the bedroom cassette was when i stopped thinking like oh this is going to be like some twitch horror where something's gonna pop out five nights at freddy's me and i was like oh this game is going to be truly scary this game's going to be fucked up scary um and then i had to keep playing it because you know it's my fucking job at this point autumn this this moment hit you at all yeah i the kind of fake out on the basement so good the exact writing there is just artful um like there's a lot of I have the transcript up there. It's like, while poets and psychoanalysts no doubt dread the thought of a dark basement, in truth, it is the bedroom, yeah. the waking mind, the place of dreams, yeah. which is actually the most frightening of all. Like, you can't beat that. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I think my idea of this game as a queer person that grew up in the suburbs mm-hmm. is that you don't get this game if you think about, oh, what if this place that I think is safe is actually not yeah. safe? I think this is a game that understands that these places have not been safe. Um, And like the particular claustrophobia I get playing the game is that like in the suburbs, if you're a kid, you're kind of stuck in your house. Sure. Um, You can't go out somewhere. Like I now live in Brooklyn and it's really weird how close a lot of people are to me. Yeah. Just on the other side of my apartment walls yeah. but like i can also just leave here and i can get really far just on my feet and you can't do that in suburbs there's like that sense of entrapment uh even though there's wide open space if you go outside like you can't you're not like actually permitted to yeah. move through that space i had no clue you were in brooklyn wave out your window i'm in queens can oh. you see me right now um, i i think that's a it's a great point um and i also think it's one of the as as this game goes on and we'll talk about there is this kind of like 
thing that it's doing with its narrative where it is making you feel like a scared person in the house, but it is also like making you feel like or at least understand the house. You know, and it's like by by the end, the house is basically the sympathetic character, even though it's like spent the past hour scaring the shit out of you. And I think that idea of kind of like, what does it mean to be trapped here is like first you're thinking about like, that's me. That's a person who lives in a house. And by the end, you're thinking like, no, the house is trapped here. And like all of this haunting is coming from like its ability to not leave. And it's kind of like lack of agency in what happens to it which i think is like a really interesting reading it also like helps justify a design decision there are only two doors in the entire house that don't give you the prompt that you can interact with them and they're the front and back door which on the one hand is just like the game doesn't exist out there it takes place in the house but like it does like narratively fit into the like there's no option to leave you can't go outside and stand on the front porch and be like okay cool no nothing's gonna scare me out here like you might in like, uh, I guess Gone Home starts on the porch. The game doesn't happen yeah. out there. There's no, like, there's no safety from it, which I think is really interesting hearing you talk about, like, the entrapment of the houses. is like the game doesn't even give you an option of, like, a safe zone outside of its walls. There is, there is, of course, very good subtle work that the game is doing. I love that you can hear doors unlock in the house is is like a particularly excellent thing where it says you know there's a there's a tape in an upstairs bedroom you can actually hear like a that's like the little the little lock unlocking on one of the bedroom doors and then i don't think i i don't think i noticed that that's cool there's also like a sense of distance to the sound so like if you start to walk away from the tape recorder it gets quieter yeah um and it's louder when the door's closer to you open also, which becomes, for me at least, like my back was turned to the basement door at a point when it unlocks. Yeah. And that was just like, ah. Yeah, did, so. I didn't even notice. Who did that? When when the tape was playing, did y'all just kind of stand and look at the table or did you like explore? <laughs> well, well, I have to make the, um the trailer for the season so i had obs running and i was kind of framing actually uh -huh. shots of the, of the recorder so i was facing the recorder every time they were playing being like does it look good in this lower third yeah i was just standing around like I, I had started to wander but like it got quiet to a point where i didn't want to go further and then there's also the matter of it not having any sort of captioning really yeah uh, which I was like, that's a weird choice, but it does become very relevant to like how you experience it later. I was I was just going to bring this up actually, which is like it it is it is an accessibility concern, and I, it sucks if there's someone who like can't enjoy this game because they need subtitles on it or whatever. But like, it is important to the game that it is hard to understand these tapes, and it gets harder, you know, because as we get into the the next couple run throughs things degrade to the point where they are like basically inaudible yeah i mean i i see what y'all are saying i think there's like a pretty easy way you can just do that in subtitles where you just kind of like garble up letters because it like i mean granted like I'm, I'm not someone who needs subtitles from an accessibility standpoint but like i don't know what the last i barely I could barely understand the last monologue in this game. Like, y'all yeah. will have to tell me what it said, because, like, I just couldn't understand it. I was like, well, this seems very important to the game, and it's, like, messaging, and just, like, the lack of subtitles. I was like, well, it's gone. I don't know what the fuck. I missed all of that. When I was doing research on this after playing it, I actually found, through a Tumblr post, uh, someone shared a Google Doc of a transcript for the whole thing oh, that they put together, cool. and they do a very House of Leavesy thing where they're just like fucking around with the font sizes and bolds and italics and key smashes and stuff uh, to make like an actual transcript that accompanies everything. Uh, and it even borrows some of what the text in the game does when it starts to break, which is like the letters going off the screen and everything. That's really cool. Yeah, um, yeah this is actually, it's one of the first things that comes up if you Google the game as uh, like Anatomy Kitty Horror Show transcript on the tumbler by uh where is my wizard hat uh so sh shout out to them we'll drop we'll drop that in the episode description for people um, they want to check that out so the first run through of the game start ends with um you know what would be i think a fairly a fairly neat clever ending 
which is, uh, you know, you get the basement fake out. It says, nope, actually the scariest place is in the bedroom, waking mind. Uh, you go up there into the master bedroom, pick up a tape, and you turn around, and the door is gone, and replaced is just a tape uh, player set on the wall, and you, you listen to the last thing where it uh, says that the bedroom... Um, is not a mind, or it, it could be a mind, but it is also a mouth, and we just have to hope that it doesn't uh, close down on us. Uh, and then the game quits itself out, which is always something that I love. Um, and it's like, if that was it, I would be like, dang, good, you know, great little story, good effective game, um, good job. But it's not, because you actually have to play it several more times. Let me ask you, both of you, how did you discover that you needed to play it more than once? I knew there were multiple playthroughs, when I got that first ending, I thought it was like, okay, so now I need to go mess around. Something is going to be different. And there there starts to be things. Yeah. Uh, like you can turn the TV on to a blue screen and it illuminates the living room and it looks weird. Um, but like, yeah, but then like I had to eventually find myself back to the path uh, as the first round. There is a readme that comes with the game that is kind of broken into certain sections that it says like, hey, once you beat it, you know, play it again or whatever. And so like it, it does, there is information in the game's files that says it. But uh, Autumn, I, the same as you, I was kind of picturing the first time I played it, like I'm going to have to make a different choice in order to make a different ending, Uh, you know, in kind of a, uh, I don't know, like a, a telltale way or something. But in fact, it is it is functionally loading up a different game like it you know it is there is no way you could have the same playthrough the second time because the game kind of loads an entire different set of parameters for your second playthrough yeah it's kind of like near automata uh which is a little weird but you have a repetition until you suddenly don't but like you're still going through endings uh four or five times i also think like it's really important the framing of this as a vhs tape when you open the game um and the point of that being like vhs tape degradation yeah that the, one of the uh one of the most notable things immediately is in the second playthrough there is this like this background hum that is way louder the second time and there there are kind of like lines of static that are going across the screen but like the the primary thing about the second one is it is louder you know and this game it, it, we talk about it like not really having jump scares but like it does have jump scares they are all just kind of volume related where like sometimes the game will just like get loud and you're not expecting it in a way that uh, Blake I'm almost surprised we haven't uh brought it up until now I have not seen this movie Autumn, I don't know if you've seen this movie. Uh, Skinamarink is a movie that a lot of people have told me that I should watch mm. specifically because of how much I like this game. I know that, like, you don't really like that movie that much, but, like, do you feel the shared DNA here? No. I mean, uh, like, I guess in the sense that it's like, what if a house was weird? I think Skinamarink is just so uh, Reddit-brained. It's made by a Redditor. Like, this game is so much smarter than Skinamarink, which is just like, I don't know, people really like that movie. I don't want to speak too ill against it. Hey, well, listeners, we covered it. Or, Autumn, have you seen Skinamarink? No. Okay. If, it, if it's anything, if you are putting it in the realm yeah. of this thing, I don't want to see it's, it. It's like really like, what if A24 made a creepypasta movie? Like, that's kind of it. That just sounds like A24. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> but like, here's the thing. It has a couple really incredible scares in it that i will not take away from uh kyle edward ball who uh i think just s is summoned when you say the name skinnamarink he is the skinnamarink he could if, i noticed when we like when i tweeted like i watched skinnamarink he liked it really quickly and i was like hmm weird thing to do, dude <laughs> one thing i wanted to say really quick going back um a few minutes i don't know if jacob did this consciously just knowing me so well but I'm definitely not the kind of gamer who would ever read a read me. I feel like I absolutely did do this consciously. <laughs> Luckily, I, Jacob told me, hey, there are multiple playthroughs and said the correct thing. 
it's kind of like near automata and i was like oh hell yeah let's fucking go i love i love that weird anime game um otherwise i would have joined this call and be like that was a cool little 10 minute experience we played <laughs> <laughs> neat thing um, so my my take on uh the game scariness is i actually think this second playthrough is peak like i am as jacob geller being scared i think that the second playthrough even though things kind of continue to escalate in the third and then kind of uh, the fourth which is uh, almost completely different um but what happens in this one is Several things that I think are, are, are almost perfect as like a a horror move. Um, the the tapes start breaking down. They kind of like start similarly, but won't finish, or they'll get like really garbled, or they'll kind of like cut out in the middle. Um, and 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 the text of where the next tape is starts breaking, where it kind of. The first one is just, like, off-center and has a bunch of, like, random text in it, but it still says, like, there's a tape in the dining room and then whatever. But eventually it says the single scariest phrase that this game could deliver you, which is, it just says, all doors are unlocked. And so suddenly you don't have a destination to go to to get the tape. It's just, like, you have to wander the entire house to find where the next one is. And I remember, like, seeing that for the first time, I I was just, like, this is the cruelest thing you could do to me. <laughs> Jacob, uh, do you, what playthrough do you find the first optional cassette? Now, is the first optional cassette just the, the tape player in the bedroom that... Yes, so you can find a couple, and one you play we'll get to the second one because it's the most fucked up thing in this game but the first one is someone let me be real with everyone not singing very well pretty bad singer all things considered uh singing i think it's jesus loves me yeah right? yeah yeah it really reminded me of the the final scene of gummo if you all have seen that um i believe the little girl in that is singing um jesus loves me i don't know actually maybe it's the audio from gummo um i i don't know what it was about it something just about that tape which i think is in playthrough too that like sent a cold chill through my entire body in a way like i can't describe i have nothing smart to say about it but it was like one of the two scariest moments in the game for me was discovering the jesus loves me tape and just like clicking and listening to it yeah for sure and also like you can't well actually i don't know if this is the case with the jesus love me one the second one you can't turn off or maybe we'll get I would there. just like we'll get I, there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll, it's it's, it's very um, scary. It's, Kitty Horror Show needs to be tried for that crime because <laughs> it was fucked. <laughs> it was I couldn't handle it. Yeah, okay. So so Autumn, when you get to this uh all all doors are unlocked, are you feeling the way that I am feeling, which is just like constant chills down my arms and whatever? Yeah, no, I, I would not open the doors. I I personally would stop going back in the house, stop <laughs> yeah. putting the tape on. Um, this, yeah, this is the thing, like I said earlier, I, I didn't want to open the doors when they were not opening because they were locked. It's like, okay, thank God. That was like a little bit of relief. And this just throws it all away. And like, you know that there are several rooms you have not been into yet too. One thing we didn't talk, we haven't talked about are the paintings on the, oh, true. Yeah. The pictures uh -huh. on the wall, <laughs> but I'm, I'm pretty, where the pictures are the worst listener. If you haven't played, the pictures are just scary. They remind me of like diagrams of anatomy that you would find in like a fake old book from the 17th century yeah it's like it's like the evil dead version of like a you know how to how to dissect a hand or something have you ever had ki a, a kind of goth friend in your early 20s this is what they usually decorated their fucking house with um, but in the second playthrough i think the master bedroom opens where the pictures are at their worst like and they're a lot bigger two i believe like, oh, like it's impossible to kind of look yeah 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 it's it starts to be impossible to look away from them because the game is like funneling towards you like stare at these walls like look at like i don't know that they really serve a narrative purpose other than what if a house had scary pictures and like that is scary but like the master bedroom on playthrough two when all the doors unlocked it's like jesus christ like where are we going? There's a really effective one when you get to the bedroom and it says like, oh, what if the bedroom's a mouth? All the pictures are teeth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's like, oh yeah. Yeah, and, and so it yeah, the game the game just suddenly becomes, you know, and then it's like basically you have to be like, am I going to go into the basement? Like I can't find the next tape. Am I going to look down there? You know, which is just such a, a terrible decision to have to make for yourself. Um but oh, and also there are things uh Autumn you mentioned the um the TV but there are also like there are plates on the dining room table in the second playthrough and if you click on them they just break and it's this very weird kind of like what does that mean like what what am i doing here and then it it kind of plays into like the later narrative that the game is doing but it's just this like weird interactable where you keep wondering like what what part of the game is this and ultimately i don't think it affects anything um but for me maybe the the longest sustained scare um maybe that i've ever felt uh certainly certainly while playing a game is is something that happens in about the middle of this playthrough which is you are picking up tapes and you're putting them in and they're like completely incomprehensible you can't hear anything and then there's this one that in the middle it kind of like it glitches from the uh, kind of detached autonomous or uh, not autonomous um, academic voice into um, a more you know what what sounds like a woman's voice like whispering in your ear in a like a, a quality that is much more clear uh, than than the other ones have been and it's like that is already so scary because it's a voice that you've never heard before but then like what the voice is describing is someone walking up walking into the house and walking down the hallway and you have spent so much time in that house that you know you know the layout of it and so and so the voice is describing like he's walking down the front hallway he's upsetting things he's knocking things off the wall and you're in that kitchen which is at the end of the hallway and just like the fucking chills going down my body of just being like please please don't something walk around that corner i will literally <laughs> die if that happens what? that's it i i I think it well no that moment like really stood out to me and I think it's like it seems very clear that at least for first time players like horror show knows what you think this game is going to be and it's like a five nights at freddy something's going to pop out like you're constantly waiting for it so when you uncover like a, this tape which is like very well written and like very poetic but describing something walking down the layout of the house you are just expecting it like some low poly motherfucker to walk around that corner. It's going to be creepy. You're going to scream and then, you know, game over like any other kind of like PS one inspired uh, indie game that kind of comes out and blows up on steam for a week. Uh, like, I think it's brilliant to like the game is so well aware of who you are and it's weaponizing it against you in such a smart way. And then like flipping the script on that, like there are, you know, no, there's no guy that walks down the fucking hallway for you. But, like, on top of it being terrifying, like, it's a really, really genius design decision to just be like, I know you better than you know yourself, and I'm going to fuck your whole shit up. I think the tape also introduces the idea that the, the house is sentient. Like, that is kind of the house's perspective. Um, and starts to flesh that out. And, like, you start to think, like, so what you start to imagine, like, what is the body of the house? How does the body feel that? Um, and we get at the idea of like it's it's already planted the ideas like are the windows eyes well what's it like to have like tw twelve eyes right that kind of thing there there are like two narrators in the game right there's the the first one doing this like kind of uh, a lecture almost about houses that gets you to think about houses and then when you encounter the second narrator it becomes clear oh the house is thinking about me too which is like a very weird meta scary concept to be like this is a two way street we're both kind of like thinking about this symbiotic relationship, but one of us is thinking about how to end the other. Yeah, like, the, the end of that story is the house slamming the door on this person so that they fall down the stairs yeah. and just watching them die. It, it is... The, the writing is so 
it's so good and it's so chilling mm-hmm. where it's describing this this person who has like ticks all over their body and then and it, it, like like it describes like the ticks are bursting as he falls down the stairs and it but it is also this you know it is it is introducing the house even as scary as it is as like a sympathetic character because it's basically having its body invaded by someone who does not respect it you know and and it's like it's not hard to read um you know like a a metaphor of of violence of like domestic violence or something into this because it is like the house the house being invaded the house's space not being safe anymore and so then you know the the house making uh, making the choice to retaliate and like knock this guy down the stairs but it's like it's very clear from the narration that like this person i mean it says like he pees on the wall you know but it's like it's a very kind of like uh it, it, invasion of space feeling a narration and like we already use those metaphors of like in invasions of the body and invasions of the house the home and like the nation right like we we conflate all these metaphors all the time already and so like it's just like starting to twist those around a little bit and like redirect them back at us changing the point of view then another horrifying thing happens which is actually it's easy to miss where um after after the you know says the knocked him down the basement um the the basement door does not only unlock it swings open and because you're in the kitchen you can actually see it swing open which is like another one of those like god damn it that's so good that's so scary um and then you uh and then you walk down the basement stairs and arguably uh, another like jump scare e thing happens because there's just kind of a loud noise and the game shuts off like it feels like it 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 almost feels like the game blue screens like it really feels like a glitch where the game just cuts itself off but that's the end of of playthrough 2 uh, at this point, Blake, were you excited to restart the game and keep going? Why do you ask dumb questions? No. <laughs> Idiot. Uh, no, actually, there was a moment after playthrough two where I was like, mm, maybe I'll play tomorrow. You know, maybe I will stop. And then I forced myself. It was nighttime. I was so scared already. I was like, no, capitalize on the experience. But there was a moment where I was like, I'll wrap it up tomorrow on my lunch break when it's sunny outside. I held true. I played it at night. Um, yeah. So the the third um, the third playthrough starts. Uh, notably, you don't start in the main hallway. You start in a bedroom, which is uh, uh, already it's kind of like with all with all the thoughts that we've been given about bedrooms, it's very weird to start there. But like the third playthrough, we we didn't really talk about this on the second, but like the house really starts glitching in strange ways and it starts on the second but like it goes crazy on the third where there are like these weird dark lines that are kind of like like static flickering through the walls and and you'll like walk into the bathroom and the mirror will be like halfway in halfway out of the wall but in the third playthrough there are just these like these pulsing you know they they look like veins or like you know arteries or something that are just like breaking through the walls and kind of like strobing and and so it's just like the third playthrough i think is almost not as scary as the second just because it's so clearly fucked that you're just kind of like it's it's a little more obvious but it's still terrifying blake you're looking at me like i'm insane yeah because you find the fucking other optional uh yeah (laughs) what are those things called tape players Y'all ever seen, people try to say this movie's dog shit, and I like to, I try to tell them their dog shit for this take, uh, because this movie goes hard. Y'all ever seen The Devil Inside, the found footage possession film from, like, uh, 2012? No. There's a scene in it, as I recall, it's been a long time, maybe this movie's dog shit, and I just like it because I was 17 when I saw it, but, um, it's a, a woman's mom is possessed, and she lives in Rome, She's like institutionalized there. And there's a scene where she goes to visit her mom and she's like, uh, mom, it's me. What's up? You know me. Well, you're not going to act strange. And the mom just like unprompted starts screaming at her. Like not like yelling, not being like saying things, just like shrieking. And it's not like a scared scream. It is like an angry scream, like top of your lung, shrill anger. And I remember like that more so than the like normal scares in the movie that like 
terrified me. There's something just about like screaming in agony or horror or anger that like just complete outcry of emotion that I find horrifying. So of course, this game does it because you know nothing can be easy with anatomy it always has to be the word the, the worst thing imaginable there's a tape player in the the i believe the master bedroom one of the bedrooms you play it and it is just someone it sounds like it is recorded on a victrola the audio quality is so bad um just screaming peaking the peaking the audio left and right I don't know the emotion there. It's probably some amount of pain and terror, maybe anger, maybe all of them. It's just like this like very visceral outpouring of human feeling. Uh, and your condition, and that's like, that's terrible. Like I cannot even begin to describe. I'm already scared of that thing, like the cold chill that went through my body and just stayed there. But you're conditioned throughout the rest of the game to let the audio clips play to completion. So you just like stand there. And listen to it and endure it, most importantly, or suffer through it, whatever you want to say. Like, you're not, it is not just a passive listening experience. And then it never stops yep. and it loops. And after a while, you realize you've been there for a couple minutes listening to screaming, which as a human is not good for your brain. Not, not a joke, just not good to listen to. It does things to you emotionally. And then it never stops and you walk away. And you can hear it down the hall. And when you have to pass by it again, you'll hear it faintly coming from your right or left ear, depending on where you are. And it is like, without question, I'm going to say it right now. I'm going to drop it. The scariest thing I've ever encountered in anything, not just a game. Like something about that one audio clip is like, hands down, the single scariest thing I've ever experienced. It's crazy. Nothing smart to say. Head empty. Just scared. Shit's fucked. I'll try to make one smart observation, but I think the lack of intention there gets at it kind of lines with the themes of like thinking about this non-human body yeah. and like trying to read emotion into it. I don't know who that voice is supposed to be. There's like, depending on which narrator you're listening to, like the the narrator that kind of interrupts in the second playthrough very much seems to be the house. And you play a lot of this game realizing the house is angry at you. But, like, there's also the reason it is angry at you is because, like, you've inflicted some amount of pain through neglect on the house. And, like, you can read this as, like, that's the house's anger and agony. Like, that's the pain. And it doesn't go away because, like, there's no, you don't, what is that game, Home Flipper or whatever, or Power Wash Simulator? Like, you never fix the house. And so the screaming never stops because the house is just like, it's going to kill you and it's still going to be fucking upset and it's still going to be neglected that like, I don't know, maybe I'm reading too far into it at that point. But like, it is clearly if that is the narrator being the house, like that is its anguish you are listening to and it's never ending. Yeah, I think like it gets uh, in some of the other dialogue also like, is there an actual way to make the house happy because it's like there's the sense that maybe like right it just outlives everyone that's ever been there and so like it and it can't communicate with them it can't like form relationships that you know it's the uh like i have no mouth and i must scream kind of thing <laughs> and then there's the scream yeah <laughs> but this is like a real concept right like i mean famous haunted houses or whatever like the amityville house or uh the the conjuring houses all of these are like you know, the, most people do not want to move into a place that is quote unquote haunted or where a murder happens. In Japan, famously, you can get crazy like um, uh, rent decreases by moving into a place where a death happened uh, because people don't want to inhabit these. Um, and so like, yeah, what? there's no solution for the house because the next owner, whatever happened there, will be scared. People won't want to live here again. The house will just continue to suffer. Because no one will love it after whatever bad thing happened within it. You can't build a home in the Amityville house. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't move into that shit. Are you, you're out of That's your mind. Right. I'm sure a lovely family lives there now and it's totally fine. <laughs> Listeners, uh, check who lives in the Amityville house. There, It's not even that far from me. I'm pretty sure it's like in Long Island. Yeah, you take the I Long Island River out there. Less than an hour. AJ, <laughs> you want to go? I don't even think he's home right now. Yeah, so there is... Um... Uh, there, there's a lot that happens in this third the, the third is kind of the most abstracted where it's like yeah we have that scream we have the house breaking um a lot of the tapes are like 
nothing at this point. Like, they they don't even contain kind of, like, recognizable uh, words or whatever. Um, except for sometimes it will it will do that thing where it actually plays, like, very clearly the tape from the beginning. And, it like, it hasn't changed the dialogue, but, like, you are just living with so much knowledge of, like, how evil this house is or how much the house hates you that like hearing the same words are suddenly like way more scary and the idea of like why why is this not garbled you know why am i able to understand this um is uh is there anything specific to talk about uh, in this one before we go down into the basement um oh the, well there's the tv actually which is which is notable which is if you turn on the tv in this run instead of the blue light that was in the second uh it's red and it uh, makes a scary you noise, and um, yeah, and 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 it says on there, uh, "You never came back," um, which is, uh, you know, again, the perspective of the house becoming more and more clear. Um, but then eventually, uh, you you walk down into the basement, um, and the house talks to you specifically, uh, like you, the kind of invader. Um, there's a line that I love where it says, um, uh, I, I, oh God, what is it? It's, um, there's a, there's a difference between dissection and vivisection, uh, a difference that appears to be lost on you, which is, uh, vivisection is while the thing is still alive, uh, <laughs> notably. Oh, well, it's alive, right? I, it's just, you leave the organs intact. Dissection is pulling the organs out. Vivisection is you pull back and leave everything intact i don't think it has to google tells me vivisection is the practice of performing operations on live animals for the purpose of experimentation i'm sorry i tried to mansplain and i got what was coming to me on that one i mean i i did not i i was not sure of that definition before i like looked okay. it up because of this game but i think it's i think it's like in in the non-serial killer sense it's like Hey, you can kind of look at how like a heart, you know, like cows, you can like look inside their stomach while they're still alive. Like there are kind of scientific purposes for this. Um, anyway, it says, you know, when a house is both hungry and awake, uh, every room becomes a mouth and and then actual teeth come out of the ceiling and up through the floor of um, of the basement. And uh, that's where the third one ends. <laughs> there is something that I, I want to uh, bring up, which actually was only published in uh, in April of 2023. Um, but it's a paper in the uh, in the Journal of Communication, Culture and Critique by Christine Prevas uh, called Unlocked Doors, the Trans Glitch in Kitty Horror Show's Anatomy. Um, and there have been, um, you know, Kitty, Kitty Horror Show herself is trans. There have been kind of queer readings of, um, of, of this game before. I don't want to, to TLDR, uh, Christine's article too much because it is very like long and, and involved. Um, but I do, you know, they have lines just like the house is a vexed space for queer and trans studies. Uh, after the delivery room is the first site of compulsory gendering, the space of pink and blue baby clothes of baby dolls and construction toys, and talks about kind of the the game glitching, allowing for the kind of like like they actually reference there is kind of a history of writing about glitches as as a sort of like version of queer expression to kind of like create space in between the predicted things or whatever and so it's just like it's a really interesting uh take on this game that is like you know i've seen people in the past kind of just reference that anatomy is a, a very trans game but without the sort of like detailed reading that this is going into uh and so you do need like an institutional login to read this thing, uh, but it's a really it's a good article and I recommend it. Anyway, uh, when you start the fourth one, you're not in the house. This is this is where the game kind of goes uh, goes goes nutty or depend like you know defies what you think it is going to be because there are actually there are actually a couple different variations on what this level can be. It's not the same every time, but like when you reboot the game for the fourth time you are somewhere else you are like it kind of in an outside space and you wander around for a while and then find the house from the outside okay so uh, explain the variations because for me i just walked in a single file 
then the house showed up and that was that I couldn't turn or move. But then when I watched your video, I saw you had a gameplay clip of something I like appearing like this that like I had no clue what was. So like, what are the variations? I, I, it's like, I'm also autumn. What was your experience? Yeah. Go ahead. If there are multiple different things you can get. Through? Mine was like floating platforms and an undescript void space with like bl- lights and stuff shining around um and just like you could see they it seems to go on endlessly you just walk any yeah. direction there's no clear objective to walk towards. yeah it's really okay it's really interesting how different they can be because there's one that has like if you look at the markiplier playthrough on youtube where it's just like lines and lines of houses and there's like a giant one at the end which is kind of like a you know looks it looks like a scary suburb uh, the one that i had was basically you like you started in you were like on roads and there was like nothing and then as you kind of like went down this like series of roads there were kind of like more structural looking things and then there was like one house that you had to like walk off of the road and up to the front door but it's like it's interesting that this is this is not really an element of the game that I've like seen talked about, but there are like a number of variations of what what it can be, uh, which is just a really a really neat. Yeah, game. I had no clue about any of that. Like this is the first I'm hearing about it. I'm looking at Markiplier's, which I do frequently watch Markiplier videos in my free time. Um, oh, okay, Markiplier had the he had the one I had. That's what it was. Like you 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 can't move. You just kind of have to like mm. walk down the street. I wonder if like the game so the the game functions like when you reach the end it says you can hit delete and it will it will clear your save and then you can like start from the beginning again um but i wonder if there is a little thing that keeps track of you doing it where actually your first playthrough you'll always get that one and then maybe you'll get different ones later on but though autumn you said you got something else so i don't i don't know how it decides what you get jacob you've played it multiple times right like it is it was different for you or do you think it's just right i think my guess is it's just kind of random i mean one time i think i was like by a lake uh, which is another very weird thing. Yeah, it's um, it's 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 interesting. Um, but anyway, then you you get back to the house and and the game gives you like the last the last bit of it, which is you're just in the basement and you can't move. Um, and and you're just looking at a tape player. It looks your perspective is that you're on the floor on your side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It looks you know you're maybe you are the person who is knocked down the basement stairs or whatever. The whole ending monologue though here is the like what happens to a house when it's left alone thing. Yeah. So this um I I think this this is the most direct uh haunting of Hill House. Uh, DNA in the game is that this so the the monologue in anatomy is you know what happens to a house when it's left alone uh what does it think of what does it dream um I'm I'm skipping here but it it may grow lonesome it may stare for long hours into the emptiness of its dark halls um and and basically it is talking about like the house becoming lonely and and angry and bitter and kind of like turning on itself um, I I do want to read, this is like a famous uh, quote, but the first paragraph of uh, Haunting of Hill House is, No live organism can, t- can continue for long to exist sanely under conditions of absolute reality. Even larks and katydids are supposed by some to dream. Hill House, not sane, stood by itself against the hills, holding darkness within it. It had stood so for 80 years and might stand for 80 more. Within, walls continued upright, bricks met neatly, floors were firm, and doors were sensibly shut. Silence lay steadily against the wood and stone of Hill House, and whatever walked there walked alone. Uh, which is a fucking home run of an opening paragraph, but also it is, like, it is this idea of, like, the the house as as an object that contains emotions and, like, is affected by its environment. And I do think it it's a shame that it is so hard to understand this last monologue. Um, because I do think it's kind of the game's thesis. No no comments for me. I didn't I didn't hear it. <laughs> I couldn't understand what was being said. You tell me, y'all. 
what what was the thesis i mean i think like it's around what we've been talking about like what what does it do feel how how does it like emotionally interact with the inhabitants of it and i think you get this you get signs of like loneliness and hunger um and the age to it also that it has seen this and it knows people are either going to move out again or die and like new people are going to come but the house also doesn't understand that's happening you can start to think about yeah i think i think what it's really you know it is really just asking you to think about like your relationship with a house as a two-way relationship you know that that it affects you and you affect it and like even after you were gone there is some echo of like you that that stays in there um which which can be you know like a very kind of nice uh thing to think about but also it can uh it can get haunted real quick and i think the idea of like any any haunted house just being like the echo of its previous inhabitants this is explaining kind of why that might be you know and it's because the house the house is holding on to the feeling of people being inside it even though there aren't people inside it anymore final question y'all believe in haunted houses y'all believe in ghosts yeah i i think i believe in haunted houses more than ghosts you know which which doesn't quite make sense because it's like well then what are they haunted by but like the idea of a house being you know it's like i I can't explain why I find it scary to be in, like, a house in the dark alone, but it's not because I think, like, a dead person is going to appear and scare me, you know? So it's, like, there is just some fear that I have attached to the house itself, uh, separate from ghosts. Yeah, and I think, like, that becomes apparent here also in the sense that, like, this is not some old, creaky Victorian or gothic house. It, It looks like it was made in the 70s somewhere in America very non placey. I uh I choose to believe in ghosts cuz it m- makes me less scared of dying, which is <laughs> my primary fear is dying. I'm like, well, if ghosts are real, then there's nothing to worry about. I'll just be a cool ghost. Call my ass Casper. Call your ass Matt Lease. Uh, cool Ghosts, the YouTube channel. That was what I started. The... Oh, that's good. That's good. Everyone remember good. at the beginning of that's the podcast a... when I said that thing? That's a great way to end it, Jacob. Thanks for listening <laughs> to something on. I've been Jacob. He's been Blake. Autumn, thanks for being here. Bye. Um, <laughs> I, for for me, you know, it's like it is it is hard for me to not talk hyperbolically about this thing. And, and we already have. But it's like this game is for me the kind of rare the rare thing of like a perfect horror object you know it it almost feels like you know you know those have you ever seen those videos on youtube where uh someone's like i cooked the purest cookie and it's like you can get like chemically perfect flour that is like it is like completely untouched by any other thing and it's just like this is pure flour you know this is the purest they can get for me this is like there there is kind of nothing that you could do to this to make it a better horror experience than it is it just it it feels almost kind of like uh, primeval in that it's just like it exists it's it's hard for me to think about someone developing this game you know because it feels so just kind of like controlled by itself you know um it's it's one of my favorite games ever yeah, i think like it has a certain effect that you get from like short stories in fiction where there's a quality to just how concise it mm-hmm. is um blake did you have uh you can you can say no i won't be disappointed do you have trouble sleeping after you played this oh yeah a little bit um i live above a hookah bar <laughs> well, I, I almost <laughs> I almost said the name of the place. Um, I live above a hookah bar. I called two noise complaints on them yesterday. So, yeah, I did have trouble sleeping that night. Autumn, related to anatomy, did this game, uh, did it did it stick around <laughs> in your head? Uh, well, actually, I also had trouble sleeping for completely oh, okay. different reasons, <laughs> uh, which is it just got really cold in the city. So yeah. all the mice moved into oh, the Oh, God. Yeah. Another oh, reason a place yeah. can be alive. It's filled with mice. Oh, okay. Um, there's actually something I do just want to touch on yeah. quickly, though, about this, like, ending monologue thing and, like, some stuff that's just been said where, like, 
for me, I guess at the time I am playing it, it does make me think more about my own body too. Um, I I feel kind of weird doing this, but I just like wrote this like strain of conscious. Oh, please do yeah. out after playing it. Yeah. What do I do with the feeling that my body is a house that is rejecting me? That every morning I wake up and it gnaws at me from the inside. Human microbiome, cancer, dysphoria, all existential challenges to the house as my own to live in. The house that was, of course, never really mine, never belonged to this generation that's dying younger of illness caused by stress and pollution and lack of access to health care. But the house won't forgive me for my parents' sins. We're all just renters in this body. I'm, I'm giving a clap. Discord's not not picking it up. A stream of conscience better than anything I've ever read. So that was great. <laughs> Autumn, thank you so much for coming on uh, Something Rotten. I do, I, I you know, we, we talked about your uh, your Miyazaki writing um, at the beginning of this, but uh, the, the articles that you wrote for, or the one, the one that you wrote for Bullet Points on Armored Core specifically, I really loved, and I, I recommend that other people check that Thanks out. So yeah, it was great to be on here and talk to you. Um, anything else that you wanna you wanna plug that Joe Hisaishi uh, interview should be out? Yeah, yeah, by Paste now? Magazine. Go check that out. Uh, that week also uh, gonna have an interview out with the developers of Highland Song. Um, so yeah, you can find all that on my uh, social internet lifeboats. That's like a uh, at the Autumn Right on Twitter and Blue Sky, and at Autumn on Cohost. Um, you can also keep up with my writing at Unwinnable, a uh, monthly indie games script magazine that y'all should subscribe to if you don't know about it yet. Yeah, all these all these freaking new subscription uh, game sites, subscribe to Unwinnable. They've been doing stuff for years. Been doing the thing for over a decade. People like to forget about Unwinnable, but that's your first mistake. Never, <laughs> never forget. forget about Unwinnable. I, I, AJ and me... Found, I found my physical quarantine. Autumn, did you write for that? I have a terrible poem in there, yeah. <laughs> I have a haiku in it, of all things, yeah. Um, uh, we found that it's it's like on the centerpiece of our entire apartment is the quarantine. So we stay loving and unwinnable awesome. in, this, in this house and in the something rotten uh, internet house. Uh, okay, and uh, look, for, for Blake Hester, uh, my name is Jacob Keller. This has been Something Rotten, and... Uh, Blake, I just want to sincerely apologize for making you play this game. And uh, our next couple games will not be as scary. Hey, here's the thing. Your ass is going to have to play Nier Automata soon, so everything's coming up. That's not house. confirmed. It literally is. We confirmed it two episodes ago. So <laughs> remember what you say on this Okay, podcast. but that's just at some point in the future. All right, we're done. <laughs>